Hey guys, welcome back to Myers Workshop. Uh, today is going to be a follow-up video to something I mentioned on the end of my preview, most recent chore video that I put out. Um, at the end of that video, I kind of showed how I had to rig something up to get our well going to be able to get water to the cows and the horses because at the end of Saturday, they had drank all the water that was available. And so the amount of water that they're consuming was going to be a very difficult task if I was going to have to haul it by hand. Um, so I immediately went into problem solving mode and around Saturday afternoon when the trough was getting about two thirds empty, uh, plus we needed gasoline, I went, went into town to try and find uh, what I needed to be able to hook the well up to a generator. Um, got the gas, no problem, was unsuccessful in finding the proper connections. Um, I did do a lot of research in like what kind of connection it was. I did try to look online first and none of the stores gave me much conclusive evidence, but the kind of plug for this 30 amp, uh, 240 volt plug is an L1430 R or an L1430 P that just dif differentiates between the male and the female end of the cord or the plug. Um, nobody had any, uh, none that you could attach to your own wire, no cords themselves, and no boxes or anything. So if they did have them in stock, which there was only a couple of stores that actually showed, like they, you know, usually carry some, they were all gone. So obviously I was the, not the first person to think of this, uh, problem. So once I realized that locally, I was not going to get what I needed to set this up. I was going to have to MacGyver something and figure it out, which is why I came up with this right here. And I was able to get the pump going and run it for multiple days, got water to not just, you know, our house, but also to the cows and the horses and everything was fine. Now, again, like I said before, and I'll say it again, it wasn't the most ideal situation, but I wasn't operating from ideal circumstances. And so I did what I had to do. I chose to go ahead and share that even if it gets criticism because I think that that could help somebody who's not in an ideal situation be able to solve that problem. So once I realized that I was not going to be able to find any of the materials locally, jumped on Amazon, actually I think I was in the Lowe's parking lot before I had left, and went ahead and ordered uh, what I felt like I was going to need for not just this current situation, but I wanted to make sure I did something that would alleviate any kind of pressure or stress in a future situation. I wanted a long-term fix for this particular problem. Um, and that's where I found these switch boxes. So this is just a plug box you're gonna, we're gonna wire in that is going to let the uh, generator plug, which is the, you know, they make specific kind of plugs for these 30 amp generators or these 30 amp plugs coming off the generators. So I got the two uh, boxes and I got two cords. Um, I got a 10 foot cord and a 50 foot cord. The 10 foot cord is for the well right here um, in the box that I'm going to mount on this uh, panel. And then the 50 foot cord I got to be able to put a back feeding plug on our house. So I want to do these two uh, hookups in two separate videos and that's for a couple of reasons. The first reason is the back feeding connection is way more complicated and requires a lot more steps and focus. Um, and then the second reason is when, by the time that this stuff arrived, which I ordered it on Saturday, I didn't get it until like Wednesday evening. Uh, no, yeah, Wednesday evening. And then by Thursday uh, night, we actually had our power restored. Uh, so when that happened, I was actually going to shoot this video, setting it up and actually using it. Uh, but because power got restored, um, I decided to do something a little different. So my friend Charlie, who's in Rich Spring, uh, they're going to be without power for four more weeks at least um, because it got hit harder than our area did. And so instead of setting up that plug and that cord on a system that I'm not going to need right now because we have power back, I gave Charlie one of my plugs and my 50-foot cord and let him backwire his house to be able to get his hot water heater going. 
um, because he's got a tankless uh, propane water heater, so it didn't need a lot of electricity, but he wasn't able to run it with all of his freezers and fridges off of just the regular uh, GFI plugins on the front of the generator. So I gave uh, the 50 foot cord and the plug to him. He got it set up this morning, called me and said, thank you so much. It's just, he said, just being able to turn a light on inside your house is just a huge blessing. And then obviously the hot water he actually ordered his own stuff, uh, the exact same plug and, a, and cord. Um, when that stuff comes into his house, which might take a week or a little bit longer, he's going to return it to me. Um, or really, we're just swapping because he's, he's just going to give me the plug box that he ordered and the cord because um, they were exactly the same. And then I'll shoot the video showing how I'm going to set up a back wire plug into the house, all the steps you need to know. So that'll be coming out you know, after this video. All right, let's jump into getting this set up. Um, you know, just a little bit of information like uh, you know, gen generators are different, brands are different, sizes, all that stuff can change. You know, this isn't going to be necessarily like this is exactly how it's going to work for everyone, but I think it's going to provide enough information that if your situation is a little bit different, you'll be able to pivot on it and, and still figure it out. Because, you know, a bigger generator that might have, you know, 15,000 watts or 13,000 watts, you know, may end up having like a 60 amp breaker, which may end up being a different cord. Um, and so you might have to order some different parts. But for any generator that's got a 30 amp plug, that's got the... Um, you know the plug model that I mentioned on it like this is this stuff that I'm gonna link is exactly what you'll need to hook up um, so do do some of your own research and you know figure out what kind of generator you have what kind of plugs are on the front and go from there um, but I think this will give you enough information to feel confident that you can do that all right let's get started on the install um, and I'll explain a little bit more as we're going through it Okay, so here we've got all of our materials. We've got the assembled conduit. That's going to go on there. These That locks it down. That protects it from getting, um, like, the wire getting rubbed on that sharp edge. Um, one, one set for each side. Okay, this is actually going to feed into this punch out. So you're going to do the first raised green punch out that's your three quarter inch you know once you punch that out that'll fit in these rings will hold it from the inside then we'll go ahead and attach the box actually what i may do is i may go ahead and attach the box now and then be able to hold the whole box up mount it up there and then screw it into the well house Okay, so we've got our wires run through into the mounted box right here. Um, it probably would be a little bit better. They make a flex line that can connect up to this, and then it's got a little bit of give in it. Um, I guess I didn't realize how far offset this box was going to make this, this box right here. It's not unsafe or anything. It's just when I screwed this box down, it's kind of at an angle. I'm going to leave it because I don't want to have to undo it and fix it. And it's not any functional disadvantage. It's just maybe a little aesthetically off, but we're going to run with it. 
So next thing I'm going to do is actually go ahead and wire these into the back of the switch, which is right here. So that's the inside, red, white, black, green. And then on the inside of the box right here, there's two screws. Um, this attaches to one, and then I'm going to run a ground wire from there and connect up to the ground inside the panel. All right, we got the plug in, sealed up. All right, so now we've got the wires on this side. All right, so the white and the ground, I'm gonna run to the perspective uh, ground on this side and white on this side. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because this system is actually grounded back to grounding rods over by the barn. Um, and so it'll just be tying into that grounding system. Uh, the white, off of the a wire coming from the well is already on this bar also so it just kind of completes that that circle but because i'm not currently needing to plug generator in to run the well i'm actually just going to cut these off kind of short um, probably leave about 10 10 inches uh, hanging out of this uh, for the hole where it comes in at and then i'm going to put two wire nuts on them so I'm just going to leave them tucked in to the bottom of this uh, panel until the next situation arises that I need to power the well with a generator. Um, the reason I'm not hooking them up to any kind of breaker or trying to backfeed this particular system is because that's a 30 amp breaker. What is required to run the pump is a 30 amp breaker. So I'm not trying to put any extra load on this generator except for the pump. So to hook this up whenever I need it, or the next time I need it, I'll come out, I'll go ahead and turn off the main breaker just to make sure, you know, if power's out, it's not gonna be an issue, but I always like to do that just to be safe. Turn the main breaker off. I'll take the uh, wires from this 30 amp, which is the pump breaker, out, and then I'll take the wire nuts off of these, connect the red to the red, wire nut them back together, black to black, do the same thing. Be able to shut the box, and then once that's done, this circuit is now hooked up. Everything's done on this end that we're going to do. Like I said, it's not actually hooked up, but if it was hooked up, I would Let's see. Have my cord. I come out here. There it goes. And these turn to the right, which lock in, which keeps it from being pulled out. And then We've got the generator right here. So we would get it in position. And this is that 30 amp plug I was talking about. Right, so it's gonna go like this, mostly. There it goes. And turn. That's right, locked in. Okay, so now that's what the hookup looks like which obviously is a lot better than the MacGyver one that I made. However, like I've said, do what you got to do. But get this setup done so that way you can easily get your well back in order, back functioning if you lose power, and especially for an extended period of time. All it will take is undoing two wires and wire nutting them together to the pre-wired plug that we already have and then you saw how easy it was to plug this uh this wire in if we ever get into a position where i have to run the well off of the generator this is going to be so much easier so much faster to set up give me peace of mind so thank you guys for coming 
and hanging out. Hope you learned something. Hope this helps people who are actively needing it or that are going to go ahead and get set up for any future um, power outages or events that would require this. So thank you again. I'll catch you guys on the next one.